I for one am happy to be able to recount this tale. AMD obviously learned from their past mistake and never did something like that again. What you see here is the result of chopping up a desktop GPU into a laptop variant, then forcing it back into a desktop card. The regulars of the channel will surely recognize the R7250. The all-on GPU powering this card looks like an experiment that went wrong. AMD took the relatively low power desktop Cape Verde LE chip with a TDP of 47 watts and chopped off half of its PCI lanes and the media encoder in hope to produce a good mobile GPU. However, the company then changed its mind and decided to reverse course on its power savings attempts and clocked the now butchered chip to above 1000 MHz, 200 more than the chip started from. The floating point performance of the card is similar to the recently reviewed HD 7750, while the pixel rate is less than 70% of said card. The now 75 watts TDP chip can still be cooled by your typical Intel stock cooler, and to no surprise, Asus decided to use just that in its implementation. This then leads to temperatures up to 75C in warframe for a delta over ambient of 50C, and that is despite the aggressive fan curve set in MSI Afterburner. To see how the card runs games today, we'll be using the good old Z230 workstation with its i7-4770 equivalent Xeon and 32GB of DDR3 running at 1600MHz in dual channel. The R7-250 performs more or less the same as the HD7750 in Rainbow Six Siege. And just like the Cape Verde card, the only resolution recommended for it in this game is 1280x720 at 50% render scale. When running with low settings, the card averaged 84 FPS and provided 1% lows in the mid 50s. Fallout 4, however, has the R7250 perform about 8% slower than the HD 7750, despite the 20 watts increase in TDP. At 720 resolution and low settings, the card averaged 38 FPS in Diamond City, the worst case scenario for this game. The 1% lows clinked to 30 FPS, so I'll say that the card can play this game. Just like the previous game, Apex Legends runs a tad slower on the R7-250. At 720 resolution and low settings, the card failed to average at least 60 FPS and the 1% lows didn't make it above 40. This is again 8% less than the HD 7750, but at these frame rates this is an academic only remark and I'd skip this title. Shadow of the Tomb Raider marks yet another title where the R7-250 falls short by a few percent from the HD 7750. The one percent loss of 27 FPS might turn off quite a lot of you from playing this game with this card. Still, this is a single player title focused more on stealth and platforming, and the average of 38 FPS doesn't feel that bad. Finally, another game where the R7-250 performs pretty much the same as the HD 7750. At 720 resolution and lower settings, the average FPS in Counter-Strike 2 went into the mid-70s. The 1% lows, however, will degrade your game experience. This might be fine for casual players, but I can see a lot of folks opting for a better card. Borderlands 3 couldn't completely debar the cinematic frame rates when running at 720 resolution and lower settings. The R7-250 managed a 1% lows of 24 FPS, and this pretty much negates the average FPS of 31. And yes, this is even crappier than what the HD 7750 managed. Fortnite is yet another game where the pixel rate handicap of the R7-250 ends up hurting its performance when compared to the HD 7750. The game is somewhat playable at 720 resolution and performance mode, where the average reaches 69 FPS. What promised to be a nice experience however is ruined by a single play of worthy 1% lows. I'd avoid the main map when using this card and focus on the reload game mode. And speaking of, 1080 resolution and performance mode has the R7-250 averaging in the low 80s. The 1% lows are now almost 60 FPS and the reload mode plays just fine. Lowering the resolution will help cement that 1% lows in the mid 70s at 1600x900 and at 100 at 720 resolution. I am running out of ways to say that the R7-250 is slower than the HD 7750. In Terminator Resistance at 720 resolution and lower settings, the Oland card averaged 45 FPS, that is 3 FPS less than the Cape Verde chip, and provided 1% loss of... Uh, 26. This is noticeably worse than the HD 7750, but still somewhat acceptable for this slow-paced single-player title. Just like with the HD 7750, my advice is to settle for 720 resolution and lower settings when playing Overwatch 2. 
a real match will have the performance drop to 80% of what you see on screen right now. With the average of 103 and 1% loss of 82, this means that only 1280 by 720 will play well in a match. And yes, the HD 7750 is 8% faster. I swear, the worse the Radeon card, the better the results in Dota 2. Same match replay, same 1080 resolution and lower settings with the render scale set back manually to 100%. And the weakest R7 250 now averages in the triple digits, 20% more than what the RX 580 got. Uh, I just don't know. I think that the significantly more powerful HD 7770 is the minimum if you want to play Control. At 720 resolution and low settings, the R7 250 managed 34 FPS for the average and stayed in the teens for the 1% lows. The experience is quite choppy and with no more sliders to adjust, I just used a better card. GTA 5, however, stays in the playable realm, with the R7 250 averaging 69 FPS and providing a 1% loss value of 47. At 1080 resolution and low settings, the game experience is quite fine for the single player title. Although the FPS values are a few percent lower than what the HD 7750 got. Warframe is the last game to point out that the R7250 is slower than the previously reviewed card. Still, 74 FPS on average and 49 FPS for the 1% lows at 1080 and low settings is not bad for this title. While the R7250 is still dear to me, it is definitely a sad tale of a desktop GPU chopped off into a laptop GPU. And when nobody wanted it, it was then forced from a less than 40 watts intended TDP to now run at 75 watts on a desktop card that nobody asked for. I for one am happy to be able to recount this tale. AMD obviously learned from their past mistake and never did something like that again. Joking aside, there is no real reason to buy this GPU at the prices I keep seeing it, of around 20 USD and sometimes more. There are better options available, and sometimes way better. Anyway, this is it for this one. Thank you for your patience, I hope you liked it and I'll see you for...